Hi, I'm Steve Sapato and your host for Speaker Talks Speaking Podcast. And today I have the wonderful pleasure of having Eva Keitel on. And Eva is an inventive, witty, creative meeting professional with a resourceful skill set uh, for designing connections through meaningful events. That's a mouthful. How are you doing, Eva? Hi. I'm doing pretty good. It's wonderful to be here with you. And um, it's challenging, right? We're having unique, unusual times. And yet it's exciting because we still want to continue forward and plan in our virtual world, meaningful connections too. So that in its own right is, is unique. It's interesting. So thank you so much for taking the time today. Sure. Um, this is actually, this is what's great about what we're doing right now, because I know a lot of, as from a speaker's point of view, uh, from a presenter's point of view, we've really been limited because almost everybody went internal. So uh, when we were booked to speak at events, when we were booked to talk to groups, um, when everything shut down, everybody said, well, we're shutting these all down. And instead of bringing us back, right? So they're paying me $10,000 to do this keynote. We said, we're not doing that whole event anymore. So instead of bringing me back to do a $10,000 keynote for an hour to their people, they said, hey, we're going to use some of our internal people to do this. Now, the problem is, is they found out that some of their internal people weren't great presenters, weren't great speakers. So as I mentioned to you earlier, that's one of the reasons I put together the uh, certification process, certified virtual presenters, because we need to know who's good on the small screen. We need to know who's got the ability on small screen. But those are the challenges we face. Aren't part of them, part of them, the challenges. So before we get into all that good stuff, how in the world do you become a professional, a meeting professional, right? MPI, you're part of the MPI group? I am. Yeah. So how do you become, well, I mean, what makes you a meeting? Can I just walk in and go, hey, I'm a meeting professional, right? Well, you could. <laughs> that doesn't necessarily mean that you are. That, and, that's what we talk about. We say that about speakers. Everybody's a speaker or an author or a realtor these days. It does mean they're good at it, right? Exactly. And, you know, for some of us in the profession of meeting planners, you were born that way. I often, when someone says, well, how, how did you, why did you, it's an unusual field. Truly, you are born in as a hospitable individual and you spend a, a great deal of your time with that. Just like an individual who is a predestined speaker, a good speaker, I might add, they're naturally a little more hammy than some people. They are more overt. They are more extroverted. Well, the same with a meeting professional. You have an attention to detail that is unique to you. And it is often the questions that you ask that propels you to produce a better experience. And in the field that we are in, you now have the option to have certifications of a plethora of types. And um, the meeting professional was originally one of those that you kind of had the opportunity to study for, sit for an examination and be a certified meeting professional. So that is what I chose to do. I have been in the industry for 20 years and the love of logistics and coordination, the people, the experience, the way of bringing forward a gathering of people like-minded or not is is what I love. And so that's how I ended up being a, a meeting professional. And yeah, but, but like, did you, so example, you were, have you done, you haven't done this your whole life? I feel like I've done it my whole life. <laughs> but did Most you have, like, you went to college, you went to college? Did you go to college? I did. I went and when you, and when you graduated college. college, what did you do for like a year or two or five after that? So funny, I entered into the corporate industry and within a year I was incorporated into the event side of things at the oh. at the organization that I worked for. And so like you don't back then and I'll say back in the day because I'm not a young pup, but um you didn't study a hospitality type of of degree. That is become now the offerings, but that wasn't then. And so I well, actually, when I, but let me interrupt. When I think of hospitality, I think of people who are working in hotels. You know, the, they study hospitality and they get behind the desk so they one day become a manager of a hotel, right? That is one aspect of it. The hus hospitality aspect has really grown and changed. And so you can go into different fields within the education system of 
hospitality. And so there are different universities and um, courses that within that structured academia that that focuses on the art of the arch of hospitality, you know, whether it's the audio visuals, the actual meeting and events, the um, the actual hotel side of things with the general managers, but um, that wasn't necessarily the case. And I'm kind of glad because I, I did more of a business communication type of degree with a, um, a, with a minor in, you know, finance and accounting. And so it really has helped set the bar and the foundation for building on top of that in order to, when you become a certified meeting professional, you follow the study of, um, of that track that has been put together by the industry. And so it, you still get that education. And then of course, you're constantly educating yourself and learning more and, and developing as you, as you age, as you go. So what do you do now when you say you're a meeting planner? Tell us what you do now. I mean, you just say, I'm a meeting planner and people call me when they want to plan a meeting. Does that mean like a birthday meeting? Does that mean like a it's all types of meetings, not necessarily a birthday meeting or a, or a wedding. That's a bit more on the social side of stuff. It's literally the art of bringing together business people to discuss or study about a specific area, whether it be on um, the education. There is a lot of meetings that happen within the K through 12 side of stuff. There is... Um, the meetings that happen through an association, a very specific niche topic that you might have a focus in, whether it be construction or technology or those areas. And so meeting professional, depending on your need, depending on what is available, you, you know, you reach out to someone like me who has that business acumen of producing an event and it, and it contains a component associated with managing of speakers and incorporating and selecting the right speakers to reinforce the theme of the event. If the theme of the event is a is a connection event, how it's perhaps it's a sales, it's a sales conference and how to make sure that you can convey the message, you can close the deal, you can um, bring the contact in from that social media side of stuff to the phone call to the in-person meeting. How do you do that? Well, as a meeting professional, I would actively work with an organization like yours and say, okay, Steve, who do you know that is a really great speaker that also has the skill set of a salesperson? And, you know, you you or others like yourself would say, okay, I, I know two or three, you should, you should talk to them and see if they are the right fit for your demographics. For so there's a, there's a question. How do you know, like, let's say you were just talking about that and you said, I think Steve would be, or somebody said Steve would be good for that. You call me up and we talk for a little bit. Do you want to see my videos? How do you, do you, and so like, I always, I tell all of my people, uh, without a without a video, you're almost invisible because without that, people go, ah, I'm going to pass. But do you look at 30 seconds of a video or do you look at five minutes of a video? I would I would desire to see the entire presentation. I would love to understand how you carry yourself, whether it be in a live aspect, because, you know, for your experience, you might have. 15 videos from a live audience fine pass it on because even the way that you carry yourself the the way that you speak the um gestures that you make that translates obviously into a more digital way and all fingers crossed we will be moving back again to a live oh. offering in hopefully the near future so um needless to say even on a digital stage, if you're boring, you're boring on live and you're boring digitally. It's just the matter of the way it is. You know, I, I don't know if you've seen my uh, stuff, but I, uh, I got a phrase. It's uh, stop boring speakers. And I tell people all the time, you know, that's, that's why you should get trained. And that's why you should also, also get evaluated because we've all seen boring presenters, boring speakers. And yet when they come off the stage or down in front of the group, people go, hey, nice job, Steve, nice job, Steve. And what they should have been saying is, you suck, Steve, or you're boring as heck, Steve. But nobody tells us that. So most of us walk away going, hey, I did pretty good, when what they should have been saying is, boy, I need a lot of work on that stuff. And so what I tell people all the time, and people will tell me, they'll call me up and they'll go, hey, Steve, I blah, 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 right? And I go, well, so uh, 
what what's your topic? And they go, oh, I have a really boring topic. That's my problem. And I go, no, you probably have really dry material. If it's mm -hmm. boring, it's because you made it boring. And they, they look at me like, wait a minute, wait. I go, you can take the worst material in the world and make it interesting by not being boring about it. So, you know, that's one of the things that I really push on people. Uh, I got a thing called Storytizing, which is my signature um, uh, program. But it's all about how to tell your story. Because one of the worst things we can do is say, I, I did this, we did that. My, my whole experience, everybody's about I. And I go, no, I have, especially with authors, when they come to me to learn how to be better presenters, their use, their whole book is I. I That's did this, true. I did that. And you say, you have to take that out of context. First of all, nobody should have let you write that book with all those I's in it. But the second part is now that you're going to be a speaker, you have to take all the I, me's and my's out of your talk. And you're right. That's <laughs> when you're, if you're boring, you're boring and you need to get work and help on that. So, hey, if you run across a boring speaker, you should say, hey, you should talk to <laughs> Steve yeah. Zapato. Send them my way. I'll work with them. Definitely. And, you know, you're absolutely right about the eyes. It, it, I personally have a real beef when there is someone communicating and they're only communicating from their point of view. Why is that interesting to me? Why should I even care about what you are talking about? I love that. Why would I care? Why should I care? Yeah. Right. You're not relating the subject to me. So if I am supposed to be your audience. And that is one of the pieces of a meeting professionals. And I use the term hospitality loosely, but when you are hospitable, when someone is invited over to your home, often the first thing is, would you like a beverage? How oh, are you tired? Do you need to go to the, you know, to the ladies or to the men's room? You know, you have that hospitality that comes into play. Well, the same can be said for a meeting professional when coordinating an event. And the speaker is a big facet of a meeting. If they are not a hospitable human who wants to bring the audience into and convey the importance for the audience the information the audience needs, then as a meeting planner, you have to prevent them from coming to the session because otherwise you will, you will ultimately skew the meeting from a positive outcome to that of a negative one where the audience walks away and they're, and, and they won't tell you this in no. their, in their surveys. Yeah. But you hear the scuttlebutt or you'll see a tweet or a post on something that's like, yeah, speaker X, Y, and Z, they they thought it was so fabulous that they created that in 1922. Who cares? And you see stuff like that and you're like, oh man, that is what they remember about that event. And so as a professional who plans events, you're looking to prevent that from happening. So working with organizations such as yourself, certified presenters who are willing not to be boring, who are willing to be coached and grown, growing more to better the speaking opportunity is such a valuable aspect of- Well, you know, that's, that's the one thing, I've been speaking for 40 years and that's what I tell people all the time. I can watch any speaker um, and learn something from that speaker, whether it's learning what not to do or whether it's learning what to do or whether it's learning how to use a phrase. If you always go into stuff willing to learn, isn't that the key to success in almost everything we do? Absolutely. That is really the aspect of willing to live versus just existing. If you have the desire to learn and continue to learn, and that's often one of the conversations that I will have with the speaker if I'm evaluating them for an event is, I understand that I am not an expert in the field that you um, exist in. However, I do get what it feels like to sit at a eulogy. And if that's how your presentation comes off to me, I'm going to tell you. I, if when I listen to you, I want to reach over to my cell phone and be like, I wonder what's going on over here at Amazon. Do they have any special deals? You're pretty bad of a speaker yeah so That's, and do you run across now how many how many speakers do you evaluate in the course of a year let's say so it truly depends on the depths of the session 
historically speaking, three to five, what you would say keynote speakers is what you would evaluate for an actual conference, an annual conference type of thing. However, I have worked with many speakers for webinar related presentations and um, I am of the opinion that a webinar is just as important and now more than ever as we move forward into the digital delivery of content, which is what a webinar used to be, but we, we don't call that virtual learning, we would call it a webinar. But in fact, digital learning, the virtual type of education that we are doing now is just like that. And making sure that the way that you do your presentation, the information that is inside of that presentation has a, a beautifully conveyed message. It, um, it, it gives you takeaways. And so the the evaluation of speakers, I, I've been doing it for, for a long time, and I can't say that I'm always perfect, and I've had a few pushbacks where people are like, I don't, I've don't. i been speaking for 30 years. I, I, and just, I, I always say, just because you've been doing it a long time doesn't mean you're the best at it. You know, people go, well, I've been speaking for 20 years. You know, when I, when I talk to them, I'll write to them, and I'll say, hey, you interested in becoming a certain, they go, oh, no, I've been doing this for 10 years. I go, just because you've been doing it doesn't mean you're the best at it. And it's always amazing to me how people think, you know, actually, here's the problem. Everybody's been speaking their whole lives. Now yeah. they go, yeah, but I haven't been speaking for a living. You know, I only started speaking for a living for the last five years. I go, great. I had a gentleman last year who uh, uh, called me up to inquire about my speaker talks event and, and was saying something like, I've been in demand for the last, boy, the last three months, Steve, I just, tons of people. I go, wow. And he says, yep. I said, how many times? He's probably 20 times in the last three months I've been asked to speak. I was like, whoa, that's really good. And he's an airline pilot. And he's a this. But everything he spoke was I, 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 I. And I finally went, can I ask? I said, how much are you getting paid? I mean, it's none of my business, but how much, you know, how often are these paid speaking opportunities? And out of the last 20 speaking opportunities, one paid him. One. <laughs> and I went, oh, well. OK, you know, and you try and say, well, that's why you're in demand. You know, you need to learn how to be a better presenter and start getting paid more for these. And he was like, I'm already great at this. And I wanted to go, no, you're not. You know, and that's again, obviously, even if he'd have asked me, I probably would have said I couldn't work with him because his attitude was I'm already great. And all you'd get is, like you say, pushback, pushback, pushback. If they come with I'm darn good, I think I'm really good, but let's find out what can you teach me? whole Absolutely. different story isn't it Absolutely. and that's what that's what you're looking for is someone so when you say you narrow it down to three to five for the speakers listening in on this uh, podcast how do you narrow it, how do i get on your list of three to five so that you'll even look at my stuff okay so one you actually are willing to work with me on the content you don't just say look i have five canned presentations and here they are a b c d e no, 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 no. You are actually like, I'd like to understand your demographics. Who will I be talking to? What are the age groups? You actually are willing to customize. So that okay, I'm gonna, but I'm, I'm going to interrupt a second because most of the times, don't we go to an event like the event is out there online and it says we're looking for speakers. And so they say, what's your topic? Right. Don't they say, what's your topic? I see I'm fading away. Something happened here that. on my screen. And <laughs> <laughs> I'm becoming irrelevant right in my own podcast. What is that all about? <laughs> but um, so I write to these people and they say, what's your topic? What's the title? What, what's the subject? And where's your video? Now, is that where you come in or how do I get to the other place? You know, obviously I'm looking for the other place where I can submit and say, tell me about what I what you're looking for, because most places don't say that. It's true. So it's two sides of the coin. So for instance, in a particular setting, if I were actively seeking a speaker, I, I would not encourage a post that says, Let, it's a free for all, everybody submit type of thing. Generally, it's easier to go and seek a person who has a subject matter expertise and work with them or quiz them on their their fashion of working. You have to work within the style of the person that you're working with. So let's take you, for example, there was an actual request in which there is a, a group of people who 
have to deliver presentations on a regular basis. Perhaps they're not good at it. Perhaps they're scared, whatever the case is. I would seek a person like you, Steve, that has the subject matter expertise who could deliver a presentation on that. And so then my request would be to you, it says, look, in six months, I'm planning an event where I have a 30 novice speakers who have been tasked to go and present. And what I need from you is a day long training that we pretend potentially break it up into two general sessions, two breakout sessions. And these are the, the high level topics that I would be looking to work through. What do you think about that? And that would be where you and I would start the conversation. And then you could quiz me on the who, the what, the when, the where, the how long, and all of those types of things. And that would be the way in which you would then offer to customize or tell me, here are the ways that I do this presentation. And that is where the, where the why in the road leads. When you are looking to work with someone, it's a partnership. It is a, literally a partnership in order to produce a good event. And if by the person that I would like to work with is not in a partnering kind of way, he or she's like, look, this is what I do. This is how I do it. And this is what you'll get. Yeah. <laughs> Phew. Eek. I start to see some real red flags there. And those red flags could turn into fireworks. And I don't want to work with a firework producing, you know, raging fire option. So I would might draw back and be like, oh, okay, well, you know, maybe that's not the right plan. And so that's one mechanism obviously you do see those opportunities where there is a a notice that says i seek x y and z the other side of that story is there has to be a piece on your abstract that is something like a movie trailer that will tell the person that would be reading the abstract here's the takeaways that you're going to get Here's how I deliver these takeaways. And here would be the value of you doing business with me. Value number one, I'm, a, I'm flexible. I look to work with you. And value number three, my intention is to help you have the best event possible. So when and if you do submit an abstract of that nature in which it feels like you're just applying for a job like when we you know submit a resume in and it goes into a black hole if you make your abstract that last paragraph a little bit more about the value that you get i think you will likely get more traction for the people that are reading it keep it brief please 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 keep it brief when you are submitting an abstract there is no reason for it to be a three page informative mm. bit about the subject there's no uh, reason like your cover letter on a application right if it's two pages nobody's going to read past that first like three quarters no. of a page and in academia it's probably the worst you can have diagrams and uh, <laughs> outlines and a resource page and footnotes slow your roll bud there's no reason to write a book you just need to write what do you get how uh, let's let's move it to the next page it's a little like those uh you know online dating things how good is your picture if your picture's really good they might click on you it's the same thing with an abstract if it's a good abstract a brief abstract maybe you can get but to so, the next place so how would how would any speaker know like you say how would i submit an abstract where would i submit an abstract so how do we get to the meeting planners right how do so, we get to the professionals who are setting up these meetings because again we don't hear about them until they come online and, and it says this is what we did last year this is who we had speak last year it doesn't say please apply to our meeting professional it doesn't say that is that no, is that automatic it barely says that so it's the chicken and the egg syndrome but unfortunately you have to search for the meeting professional. And sometimes it's around, the, it's, it's a complete and utter barrier because of the fact that you have company X and they will promote something on their website and they may not even have an internal meeting professional. They have somebody who is contracted. 
So we're not an employee of that company. We are actually an independent that they bring in and they, you know, just work with in that organization. So another valuable aspect for a, a speaking professional is to actively reach out to meeting planners and build those relationships proactively. No meeting professionals through a myriad of ways. There are so many organizations in which meeting professionals are in, are able to connect. And I don't, you are a meeting professional just as much as I am because you work inside of that meeting entity. So actively work to develop those relationships. How hard is it to reach out through LinkedIn and say, hey, Eva, can we have a quick 15 minutes? I just want to get to know you and I would like to introduce myself to you. I want you to think of me the next time you have an opportunity. And that is the different type of marketing. It cannot always be done in a social media way unless you're a really amazing and pithy social media person, then oh. use but we all think we're amazing. Oh, well, heck, that's not always the case. I mean, you don't need to repost somebody else's post. If you're a good social media person, I'm going to follow you. I'm going to remember you and I'm going to hopefully connect with you. But nothing is as meaningful as really connecting with somebody. Absolutely. If you can get a call you can get an email conversation. You can get a text message conversation going. Those are the types of connections that people remember because I know I have a really amazing, and I call him a friend. I've never been to his home. I don't even know his extended family, except that he's on my, he's in my cell phone. I can text him. It's always business related. But if there is an opportunity to speak, the first person I think of is that individual because I right. know him. Yeah. And that's what I'm talking about. And I have recommended him many times, but it's because there's a relationship there. And even if it's just, it's that business relationship, I don't know his birthday. We don't <laughs> spend Thanksgiving together. There's nothing like that. Hey, hey, want to spend Thanksgiving with me? <laughs> Come on down. Sure. You got some nice ham going. <laughs> ham, turkey, turkey for Thanksgiving. What's ham? Oh, you can do both. My um, I just you know, my sister used to make make. My sister used to serve, and she was a nutball for don't eat too much salt, don't do this, right? Don't sure. do that. But she would always buy a, a spiraled ham. Definitely. And then cook it so dry. Oh, so, so you'd have you'd have mashed potatoes with no flavoring you'd have dry spiraled ham and you went i'm eating turkey you guys do what you want right but you went there for the company well yeah it was just part of the family yeah absolutely and that's that's really the situation with our industry we go to people we work with people who can work with us we connect and we maintain relationship with people who, who actively seek to maintain relationships. It isn't always about the cold calls. It isn't always about the cold emails. It isn't always about the, you know, could you hook a brother up? It's more along the lines of, do, do I kind of know you? Maybe. Have we talked? Yeah, absolutely. I feel comfortable referring you to the next person who who has a need because that's what we do. We help fill needs. And when we have those relationships with each other, we are able to more actively fill those needs. That's really cool. So um, obviously, uh, as a meeting planner, you're pretty successful uh, meeting professional. Now I call a meeting. Now, is there a difference between a meeting planner and a meeting professional? We all are planners, but okay. some of us haven't done it for as long as others. And so we often refer to ourselves as a professional because like you said, oh, I've planned a meeting. I'm a planner. Oh, I've, sp I've spoke before. I'm a speaker. Well, yeah. it's true. The person who plans the gatherings for the happy hour is is a planner they have planned they found a place they put the people together that's true 
are they a meeting professional? Maybe not. And so that is really the differentiator. And, um, and I think a lot of times we are careful about within the industry, we are careful about highlighting those certifications and those educational accomplishments because oftentimes the professionals within the meeting industry are kind of backseated when it comes to other professionals. And so we, I think collectively, we are all just careful about how we can highlight that we are very good at what we do as an industry. So how does a, uh, we only got about five minutes left, but okay. how does a meeting, prof how do you go about, like, how do you go about saying, I'm going, I want to go find somebody to work with? How do you, you just call up a company and go, hey, your next meeting, I want to be there? No, a lot of that has to do with relationships as well. So the, more and more in the industry and with COVID-19, you saw a lot of organizations essentially eliminate their event side of stuff because live events stopped. And when you don't have a live event, like you said, they go, they, they internalize the process of virtual meetings and they don't necessarily need that department. So now more than ever, they're going to need independent planners who can come in for just that time. We don't take, you know, there's not the fringe, the healthcare, the, the benefits associated with it. So a lot of it is word of mouth relationship, the um, procedural process that you get from the, um, MPI, the various forums that are out there, the connections, the one-on-one -on -one where someone says, you know, I, I've been working with somebody who said they're planning a meeting and they just, they're, they're missing a couple of the vital pieces that it makes to, to bring that successful meeting forward. And so they, they work with representatives like us. And so sometimes you find it on MPI, sometimes it's at a local level, sometimes it's at the international level. And it's relationships, just like with, you know, me referring you, you would refer someone like me to other people that you know. Cool. That's great. And so if you have a piece of advice for a speaker who wants to get more speaking opportunities, do you have something? Have a really outstanding website. Okay. Use what wait, what makes it outstanding? Don't just talk about your accomplishments. Actually talk about the takeaways of people, what you would get. If you have five topics that you speak well on, make sure that their takeaways are actually articulated and well understood. Have a good way to get in contact with you. Don't make it just a bot, like actually have a phone number, actually have an email, respond for God's sakes, please respond. And then the final piece of it is, Connect with people in the way that you connect best. Not everybody prefers social media, fine. Some people prefer other ways. You know, there's still the networking opportunities that are out there, they're, they're virtual right now, but they will once again go live. Connect, connect to other people. Can't be a silo in this industry. It doesn't work. You have to work with and be related to a myriad of other people so that they can help cross-pollinate your your name brand with others. So the important things are have a great website that shows that you're flexible and workable and reach out to the people and don't just sit and wait, right? But reach out to the people like on LinkedIn or Facebook who have a meeting professional or meeting a planner or something to do with meetings, reach out to them, say hi, have a conversation, start something. And then for goodness sakes, pick up the phone to get to know them to see if you really do have a connection. Because I tell people all the time, I have people call me up and, and I say, I, you know what, maybe you should check out a few other uh, speaking presenters. And they're like, well, I'd really like to work with you. And I, you hate to tell them that, but it's like, I don't think we're a match, you know, where there's just enough things that aren't working that I'll right. tell you if we're not working. You know, I mean, I, it's harsh, but um, I tell people all the time, you have to tell people the truth. And if their attitude is such that you say, I can't work with you. I, I had somebody who was... Uh, uh, a year ago was trying to get into my speaker talks event. And and I said, hey, spend the money, pay me the money, get into the event. We'll go together. And then as I coached them, I ended up giving them their money back because everything I talked them, they were a, an author and theirs was all, my book is absolutely fabulous. And my book will do this. And I was like, okay, but explain to me how and explain to me why and explain to me where. And uh, everything was I, mm -hmm. I did this, I did that. And I went, you know, it's great that you can say that, but 
how does that relate to the you and I talked about that and so it finally got to that place where you know I said hey you know what this isn't working it didn't work for either one of us so you know let's just stop doing this and she called me names she <laughs> said rude things and I was like what do you want me to say you and I have different opinions you was I was the guy you paid for the opinion and you said your friends think that everything is better the way you've got it then you don't need me so why call me names, first of all, but the other part was, yeah. you know, that you just don't mesh. I mean, it just doesn't work. And so you have to decide. And that's what uh, Eva uh, is talking about here. You have a conversation with her and you talk to her. So Eva, if they, and I, I'm going to put Eva on the spot because as a, a, me, a meeting professional, maybe she doesn't want 40 people calling her, but would you like to have a conversation? Do you want to give us your contact information? Uh, let us know. Absolutely. You can easily find me on LinkedIn, Eva Keitel, and you can also contact me. Email is better than just a direct phone call because we can set up a time that works best for us because sometimes, you know, you could be on a on a meeting, but um, Eva L. Keitel at gmail.com is the best way to get in touch with me. And then we can set up a conversation. We can get to know each other and um, maybe we can do Thanksgiving someday in the future. Hey, that'd be cool, wouldn't it? Actually, that'd be really, you know what, Have we're going, uh, oh, tonight's the debates, that's right. Indeed. So um, somebody put out, one of our friends put out uh, that he, he was having a, a big party. And I was like, why are you having a party on Tuesday? And then they wrote back and said, well, it's it's the debate night. I went, oh, and I said, what time do they, what time do they start? Because I said, we'll go eat and watch the debate. And they said, they start at 9 p.m. I went, oh. that's my bedtime, I think. Totally. <laughs> so 9 p.m. 9 p.m. Eastern time. And I said, I went to the wife and I said, hey, um, you still interested in going to nine o'clock at night? She went, sure. I went, oh, bummer. Oh, bummer. <laughs> going to party. But, we will. but that's right. You know how you how you get connected to people. You never know. Maybe we'll meet somebody at this uh, event that can change her career, change my career, change somebody else's career. Because when you find out from other people, um, I've got a book in the works. I call it. Uh, uh, let's see. Shut up and succeed. There you and go. it's all about asking, learning how to ask trusting yourself that if you ask the right questions, you'll get the right answers and that'll help you. And that's what it's all about, isn't it, Eva? It absolutely is. And asking that other person for a helping hand doesn't necessarily mean they're giving it away. They're asking you to help them. And usually it's a mutual conversation. And that's why that connection is part of the process. It isn't, what do you do? What do I do? It's, hi, I'm Eva. And I'd like to get to know you to better understand how can we work together sometime in the future? There's no promises, but it's possible. You never know. That's right. You never know. So you already know how to get a hold of Eva. If you want to get a hold of me, I'm Steve at stevesapato.com. You've been listening to Speaker Talks podcast. And if there's anything you need to know, write to Eva, write to Steve. We will probably be able to come up with at least not the answer, somebody who can answer it for you. And that's the difference. Thanks a lot, Eva, for being on. I sure appreciate you. You're absolutely the best. My pleasure. Have a great day. Thanks. God bless. All right. And that wraps up Speaker Talks for today. And uh, again, Steve at stevesapato.com. Uh, if you need more information, if you want to become one of my cert certified virtual presenters, you can go scan me right here. Scan me. If you're not using that for all kinds of reasons, a QR code, uh, then you need to learn how to use your QR codes because they can absolutely change your business. And uh, if you need, you heard her say that she would love to work with virtual, um, certified virtual presenters, people who've gone back to school to be better. And that's what it's all about. So if you need any help, you need any information, you want to be a better speaker, a better presenter, if you want to get ready for when we hit the road again, starting in February or March of 2021, where all of us speakers are going to be traveling again and flying and staying in hotels and, oh, yeah, eating hotel food and sleeping in hard beds that other people have slept in. Anyway, if you want to be a speaker, give me a buzz. God bless. I hope you're having a great day.